Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Dina and today I'm giving you a stitching update for what I've been working on this afternoon. Um, working on the Bringo um, number three, no, no, yeah, number three, uh, work on your largest whip. And when I originally did my Bringo um, board, that was pandemic. And since I'm back home, I've gone back to stitching on my original uh, board. So I pulled out my pandemic and I identified where I wanted to stitch on. And I picked this motif right here. I could easily count off of this little piece right here. So I stitched down here and I stitched both of these flowers. Let me see if I can get this where you can see it. Um, up to the top. And then I did, there's a little butterfly right in there. It's hard for you to see because the uh, stitching um, thread color is lighter. But it's interesting, I started with the darkest blue on my thread to meet up right here on this line, came down and came up. And by the time I got up here and finished that little butterfly, it was exactly the color of that light blue. So that worked beautifully. <laughs> That was not a playing thing, but I am tickled to death with it. So yeah, that looks like a little more than 100 stitches, and it is. Um, it's actually 205 stitches. But you know me, I like to, uh, when I can, set a little tiny goal that makes sense to me, and it made sense to me to finish that little motif. Next time I pick up on that motif itself, It'll, I'll be going toward the bottom of the page. And this way I joined up here. So that's solid all the way down to here. You know, my, um, my goal for just a personal goal that I have is I would love to be able to finish to the end of this page. This is page four and the little partial page right here is five. Um, and I would love to be able to do that. Um, you know, in the first quarter of the year so that I can roll it and maybe get another row done uh, next year or this year, we're in 23. But we'll see, it's not, it's not uh, on the timetable, it's not my journey piece this year anymore, so I can work on it uh, for prompts and, um, and it's easy stitching, I enjoy stitching on it, uh, which is nice and um, so, there you have it, 205 stitches in the pandemic, which is my largest whip, and that is for the number three prompt um, for Bringo. And I believe, let me see on my calendar, that was called on the 17th, and here it is the 19th, so I'm only two days behind in getting it done, and as you know, it's because I didn't have it with me, and I was able to, um, finish it up. So, yay! Glad about that. So that is the first of my 10, uh, my list of 10 that I wanted to work on through the weekend to catch up from being gone. And the, I had put them in an order of how I wanted to attack them last night after recording. And so pandemic was number one and I've gotten that done today, which is great. It's still fairly early in the evening. It's not too very late yet. We're gonna take a break here and have dinner. And then I will probably pull out Kringles because there's a prompt there in the Land of Lakes challenge to stitch on something that you can see through or that's clear. And so um, thinking of the windows in the Kringles, you know, department store would make a perfect solution for that. And um, I probably have time to at least get the the lesser of the two numbers of stitches, and if I don't get it finished tonight, I can always do it, you know, finish it up in the morning. Um, but I would love to get at least one more thing done today um, so that I could, you know, be down to only having eight things to work on. Um, it'll get more difficult as I go because the numbers get higher for the stitches. I did the small stuff first, <laughs> trying to get it out of the way, um, and we'll see if that strategy pays off. Anyway, thanks for letting me share that with you. Um, have a great weekend coming up. I'm looking forward to doing uh, a little bit of that 
uh, marathon stitching, and I hope you are too. But whatever you do, enjoy it. Happy stitching, everybody. Good morning, everyone. Coco's here with me this morning. <laughs> she wanted to say hi. <laughs> we've been for a walk, and we've been out to play. Oh, I said that word, didn't I? <laughs> I guess we're gonna have to go again. <laughs> oh, I just wanted to tell you, I'm so excited to be home with her. Uh, we have had such a good time playing and, and uh, going, you know, ambulating. And uh, she is very clingy today. I'm not sure exactly why, other than she missed us. Um, I know that, but um, I have been trying to stitch this morning, and I actually had to stop stitching, and we had to do some playing, and then I had to stop stitching, and we had to go out, you know, for a little exercise, and then uh, now I finished one of my prompts, and she heard me taking it out of my floor stand, and she came running. <laughs> I think she heard it and said, okay, Mom, it's my turn. So I'm going to share with you what I've stitched, and I'll, um, pardon me, I'll adjust this back to where you can see what I'm showing you, and uh, hopefully she'll let me get through showing you that before I have to go do something else. <laughs> um, I am playing catch up. I am participating in the uh, 24 Hours Marathon um, this weekend, and I'm pretty excited about how much I might get done because I have all day today to stitch. I only have a couple of little things I need to do in the house. And then tomorrow I have most of the day to stitch and don't have an obligation until 4.30 tomorrow afternoon. Um, so that's a pretty good block of time that I'm gonna get to stitch. So I may make um, a pretty decent hours. I don't know that I'll make all 24. Uh, because once I hit 4.30 on Saturday, we have obligations Saturday evening. We have obligations all day Sunday. It's a busy, busy day Sunday. So I'm not sure I'll get any stitching done on Sunday. But let me show you what I've gotten done so far today. I'm playing catch up, and I'm working on the second item on my list of 11 that I started with. And, oh, well, actually, my second item of 10, because I had gotten one done before I even had to start working on it very much. And my second item was Kringles. I wanted to finish a um, prompt that was the final prompt in a series of five for a challenge in the Daily 30 group called Land of Lakes. And it was to stitch on something that had something you could see through or something that was clear. And... I am working on Kringles, and you know, the whole idea about Kringles is that you're looking through the shop windows. They're clear, and you can see all those beautiful toys and Christmas decor and whatnot. So that's what I chose to do, and I had to do a minimum of 300 stitches. And today, since I'm trying to catch up on so many items, I elected to do the minimum but I ran my thread out, which I, you know, like to do. I don't like to leave them hanging if I don't have to. And so I actually wound up getting 324 stitches in Kringles. And what that accomplished, there's a dark row of stitching right under the catwalk or the um, roof here. And then this starts the mortar for the brick in the wall that's above the windows. So I got that line completely stitched and I got this one almost halfway when I ran out of my thread and I counted and I had 324. And I decided I was stopping, I was posting it, and I'm moving on to my next item. So what will that be? I will go ahead and tell you since I have a whole list over here of what I'm doing. So the next thing I'm going to be working on is uh, going to be either Royal Gains or Miss Christmas Eve because I am making up 
on the Bringo board for the number that was called that said to stitch on something sparkly. And um, both of them have beads, which make, make them sparkly, and both of them are mirror, mirabilias. So um, I think that my Royal Games is easier to get to. It's right over there on the um, on my rod, holding all of my uh, roll of frames. And um, I can just grab it right off of there. I'll show that to you. I think you've seen that when I did my uh, parade. <laughs> but um, this is how I'm storing them. I have what was a clothes rack. I ordered it off of Amazon, put it together, and I got S-hooks, the really large S-hooks, and I'm just hanging all of my roller frames on that. Pardon the moving. Um, but that makes it very easy uh, for me to get my whips when I need to grab them. And so I'm gonna put this one back um, and grab Royal Games. And I only have to stitch 100 stitches because it's for the Bringo board. And today, I will try to do just close to that so that I can move on to the next uh, item that I need to do. So, um, I'm going to grab it and hopefully be able to show you later what I've accomplished if Coco lets me stitch. <laughs> Happy stitching, everybody. Hello again. This has been my day. <laughs> well, I have a quick stitching update to share with you. I have completed my next prompt. This is one of the Bringo uh, calls, and it was for the sparkly, something sparkly. And I chose to do my Royal Games because it has beads. And I did, uh, you know, I had to do 100 stitches. Hey, baby. And um, I was able to do 116 because I just finished out my thread. So let me share with you what I did. I came over here and I worked on the collar. Right, at, I just carried on above her dress. Rather than trying to figure out where all the beads would be in here before I start her skin, I just decided not to try to figure that out today when I'm trying to hurry and catch up two or three things today. So I just came over here where it started right away and I did two colors on that collar and I ended it right up here simply when my thread ran out because I had hit 116 stitches. So this one is done. I've met that now on my bringo board. So that means I have another bingo. Here's the something sparkly square. And when I color that in in a minute, I will have another bingo. So I have this one here and I have this one across here. So that's my second one. Very excited. It'll start coloring in pretty quickly now because I'm getting close to only needing one for each uh, bingo, you know? So I have to, when I get this new start done up here, I will have a diagonal bingo as well, and I hope to get that done this weekend, but I'm gonna take a break from bringo right now, and I'm gonna go back and work on uh, two other of my projects that I didn't get to take with me. I had, I had kind of thought about taking them with me, but I had so much in my suitcase, um, you know, I just didn't have room for it. And so I need to work on joyful uh, scene, and I need to work on small gift. Um, they're easy to get to, they're easy stitches, and um, it will finish out the acrostics and I'll have those done. And then I won't have them kind of hanging in the back of my mind that I'm behind on something. Um, so gonna try to do that. I'm gonna take a break and get some lunch. Um, and so, uh, maybe see if Coco will eat. She, she doesn't like to eat if somebody's not sitting with her. And even though I put her breakfast out for her this morning, I don't think she has eaten it. I think she's been waiting on mama. So I'm gonna go down there and eat with her. And then I will come back up and I will pull out Joyful Scene. So I'll see you in a little bit. Hi 
Hi, welcome back. It is later on January the 20th, and I would like to share with you the good news that I met my goal that I was going for. I am working on an acrostic in the Daily 30 group called Winter Snow, and the T in the word winter, I chose to stand for Teresa in Teresa Coget for her joyful scene that I've been working on. So this was the one I needed to get 300 stitches in, and I am happy to report I did. I got 321. I just kept stitching until my thread ran out. Um, and let me show you what that uh, equates to because I've stitched all over this thing. I started out stitching the black. So I stitched the gloves and the boots and this little star and this nose and all the black in the window and door here and then I just started working from the top down. So I finished this house and then I picked up these, uh, well these two snowflakes and another snowflake over here so that this part is now complete. And then I came over here and I started on the little reindeer. So I've gotten, between all of that, I've gotten 321 stitches today. So that is met, and that means that I only have one letter left in that acrostic, and it's the E, and I'm having it stand for Engelbrick, and that is my small gift uh, whip by Mary Engelbrick. I was gonna try to get that 300 stitches done today as well. However, it's on navy blue fabric. It's getting later in the day. My light is not as good as I would like for it to be for that dark fabric. And my husband would like to take me out for dinner tonight. So that will cut in a little bit into my stitching time. So here's my list of things I wanna work on. And I can now uh, strike off my joyful scene. I finished that. Um, so now the next thing that I really need to work on um, would be either to pick up that small gift, which I don't, I don't think I've got enough lighting to do that well or easily, um, or to go ahead and go back to my Bringo board because I have one item left to catch up and then I have today's Bringo to do, which is the Halloween Quaker that I haven't started. And the one I need to catch up on is my magazine New Start. And I have fabric for it. I just got to pull the DMC. So that'll be easy enough to do. But um, that way I know I've got my big assignments out of the way and I can uh, breathe a little easier and move forward. So that brings me to a piece of planning that I want to talk with you about. Um, I had originally signed up to participate in an event in the Daily 30 group that's an annual event. Um, I've done the last two annual events, but and I had fully intended to do this one, but I think being on vacation and being gone for so long and not being able to get started on it, I feel very far behind. And it's a lot of stitches to get where I need to be. So um, I'm gonna look at it again tonight. I'm gonna go back and analyze it a little bit more. I'm gonna see what it would take for me to catch up, what I feel would be to catch up so that I'm on target for the year. Um, but if it's going to be too stressful for me, um, then I'll, I, then I just won't participate in that and I'll participate in everything else. Um, that's the nice thing about being in a, a group, a Facebook group that does a lot of challenges. Uh, as long as you're participating in some of them, they know you're active and they don't require you to participate in every one, which is lovely, I think. So that's where I'm at with that. Um, I have so far... Um, stitched for seven hours today. I have been caretaking of my clingy puppy. I think you've seen her in more than one little clip today because every time she hears me take something out of my stand, um, she comes running. And sometimes she comes up before I even do that. She just gets a notion and she comes running up here. And she she really wants my attention. She wants me to pet her. She wants me to play tug with her. I took her for a walk this morning. Um, I have been up and down my stairs to my craft room today over 20 times. <laughs> I have gotten my steps in, let me tell you. Um, but 
you know, her, her, um, her playmate, my husband is really usually her playmate. And, um, he had, he had an appointment today. He is about to do some, um, filming as a, a background actor. And, um, he had to go and have his COVID screen, his rapid test this morning on the way into a fitting for, uh, filming that he will be doing Monday morning, bright and early. So, uh, he had to drive into Atlanta and he had to go to two different locations and he had to go through a fitting for more than one scene. And so it was different outfits. Um, and then he had to drive all the way back from Atlanta. And so he was, he was gone for the majority of the morning, afternoon, uh, and, and he has just gotten home. So, um, he has Coco. They've gone for a romp in the park or walk in the woods or whatever he decides to do as he's driving away. Uh, and then as soon as he gets back, uh, he wants us to grab a bite together for dinner and catch up on the day and spend a little time, you know, just the two of us. So I will get back to stitching, hopefully, <laughs> this evening. And I would love to get in, um, if I can, at least three more hours of stitching. And I can stay up late tonight. I don't have to be up early tomorrow. Our obligations aren't until 4.30 tomorrow afternoon. So I could stay up late and sleep in a little bit tomorrow. And I'm, I may do that because my goal today is to get 10 hours of the 24. And if I can get 10 tomorrow, um, may or may not be able to do that, but would love to. And cause I think I could eke out four on Sunday. But um, it's, it would be hard. I'm going to work at it, but it's going to be a challenge. So we'll see. But I am happy. I hit the, um, the goal that I needed for the acrostic with my joyful scene. And so now I'm ready to put all that away. And I will um, grab my new start and, and grab the floss and see if I can't get 100 stitches in that thing. <laughs> I hope you're having a great time if you're participating in the um, 24 Hours of Cross Stitch Marathon. And uh, if you're not, I hope you're enjoying whatever you're working on, and I hope you have a great weekend coming up for you. I'll talk to you soon. Happy stitching. Hi, everyone. This will be my final uh, video for tonight. Uh, I'm going to be heading to bed, but I almost made it 10 hours. I got nine hours of stitching in today for the 24 hours of cross stitch. My husband and I did go out for dinner and that took a little time. So that's okay. That's important. So what I did is I went ahead and I kitted up my new start with my DMC floss. I had already picked the fabric. And I'm going to remind you of what that new start is going to be. This is from a January 1993 for the love of cross stitch. And there are two stockings on here, one of which has a beautiful little raggedy end on top of a ball. And the, um, the ball is, I'm going to keep it because otherwise she's sitting funny if, if I don't do the ball. But I'm not going to do the whole stocking. I'm just going to do uh, the little girl. So, I pulled out this fabric I bought when I was in New Jersey. This is one I wanted to, to try out. And it is called um, Mushroom with Brown Dots. And I think she is precious on here. <laughs> I only had to do a hundred stitches as you know because this was for my bringo and when I did her hair I had about 91 stitches or something like that and then when I did her cheeks I had 99 stitches <laughs> so I thought well I'm just gonna do her face and I got her whole face done. Isn't she precious? I even did the back stitching on that wild and crazy hair. Now let me tell you about the hair. On here, you can't tell. It looks 
kind of red, but it's not. It's brown. It's three different colors of brown. And I don't know if they had to do that because they were copying Raggedy Ann too much or what, but it's obvious it's Raggedy Ann doll. Anyway, I pulled three reds out of my stash and I did it in three shades of red instead of brown. I think they're precious. So there you have it. I think you can see her pretty well there. She's got the sweetest little face. One of the things I wanted to make sure is that the brown dots were not gonna show through her pale, palest color, which is her skin color. And I promise you, I stitched it. There are dots under there and you can't see them. So that is gonna be precious. Cannot wait to get back to this one. Really can't wait. But doing the whole face and back stitching everything, I actually did 245 stitches. <laughs> so much for doing a quick 100 stitches. I just can't make myself do it. But I just think that was a better stopping point than doing her hair and two cheeks. You know, that wouldn't have been nearly as precious to me and made me want to stitch on it even more. So there you have it, my new start for Bringo. And um, I'm pretty excited. I think it's gonna be beautiful. And I think it's gonna be about the right size to make her an ornament because it's not supposed to be any bigger than four by four. And I think that'll make a pretty little, pretty little ornament. Could do a flat fold for her to sit up on a shelf um, because it's not really Christmas looking. So I may decide to do that because an ornament you only put out once a year. But if I did a little flat fold or something or a cube finish maybe, she could keep it out all year in her collection. And that's what she's gonna wanna do. As you know, this is from my friend Cheryl because I don't collect Raggedy Ann's. Um, I support her collection <laughs> by making her things. So there you go. I'm going to have plenty of, this was, you know, just a small piece. This was a 13 by 18 piece, and I got two of them thinking I might need both of them. But I'm going to have some left over, even off of this piece. And I have found another little um, small that is Andy. Um, her brother, so I could possibly stitch her and stitch Andy if I have time in the coming year if I decide to give this to her for Christmas rather than her birthday. Probably will. Okay, so there you go. That's my new start. Um, I don't know if it says who the designer actually is for this one. So I did look in the magazine to find out if, if I could who the designer was, and this is what it says. It was designed by Sandy Gore Evans, and the needlework adaptation was done by Jane Chandler. So I don't know if um, Sandy Gore Evans has any other designs or not, or if they've been adapted for cross stitch. But again, this was back in January of 1993. <laughs> Amazing. Um, and this is what it looks like. Okay, so there's my magazine new start. And I'm excited. I'm hoping that it will, um, that I'll be able to get back to it pretty quickly because I am really loving it. Okay, nine hours in, I'm gonna get some sleep. I am definitely team sleep, not, not uh, 24 straight. And um, I have redone my list of what I wanna work on. I did decide to forego participating in the year-long event of the Olympics for all the reasons that I stated before. And so what that means is I could take those out of my list of things that I needed to do to catch up on. And they, there were two of them on the list. So instead I went back and I looked at the um, Bringo list of everything that was called on what day to make sure I had captured everything. And um, I still have 
two to catch up on prior to, to no, one to catch up on prior to today, and now they've called the number for tomorrow. So that means if I want to get completely caught up tomorrow, I have three that I have to work on. One would be the oldest whip, which is nativity. The uh, next one would be the, what was called for the 20th, which was today, which is an outdoor activity for me, Halloween Quaker, because you go trick-or-treating outdoors, usually. Some kids now go indoors uh, at the malls and shops and things. But when I did it, it was outdoors. And the one for tomorrow is a whip or new start that is an indoor activity. And I had identified that as my Stitcher's 12 days of Christmas previously because I felt like um, cross stitching is usually an indoor activity. Um, so that's why I picked that one and I think that's what I'm gonna continue um, with so that I get to touch that whip. Um, and I'm hoping tomorrow, if I have time, to get at least those three caught up. And if I do that, I have one acrostic left, one letter to do for both acrostics. And I mentioned that earlier, and that's the uh, small gift um, because I'm using the E in Mary Inglebright for both acrostics. I do have to do um, 300 stitches in that for one of the acrostics. It has a number of stitches that it requires. And um, then that brings me to my two Whip Go projects that I have the rest of the month to uh, do the, the other two, because I've, I've done the first two, um, which were both new starts. So that gives me a couple of weeks to do those, which will be great. So tomorrow, my big goals are to get all three of my Bringo pieces done and to go ahead and get that one acrostic letter done, um, which will be four different projects to stitch on tomorrow if I have time. I'm hoping to, so wish me luck, and I'll definitely keep track of the time, and I'll come back and tell you how I'm doing. Hi everyone, this is Dina. It is January 21st and I am here to give you my first update on stitching today. I'm still working through the 24 Hours of Cross Stitch Marathon and I am working on a list of items that I put together yesterday. Sorry for the crinkling. Uh, and I'm excited because I have now completed Number one on the list, which is my oldest whip, Nativity, that was for my Bringo board, and I had to stitch 100 stitches on it, and I have stitched 108, and I'm gonna move on. <laughs> this will remind you what it looks like. This is my oldest whip now, and today, I when I pulled it out and I thought, I only need 100 stitches, I don't want to, start trying to get all into the confetti and try to get all of his um, color changes and, and stuff in his cloak. And then I realized, oh, I've got some stitching down here in the border that would be easy to do and I could be repetitive with it. So I pulled out the, the color chart there and sure enough, the piece I wanted to do, which was the surrounding framing here of each of these little medallions is in a golden looking color. And when I looked at it, it was a blend and I had one partial pairing together on my, um, on my bobbin. I'll, I've shown this before, but for those of you who are, are new or you may have forgotten, when I have a blend on a, on a project, especially like a Teresa Winsler, where you have as many blends as you do anything else, I take one strand of floss that I would normally pull off of DMC that I separate into six strands, and I take both colors and separate the six strands, and I pair them, and I bobbinate them in a pair. So each of these little, there's one, there's one in the middle, there's one on the end, then I wrap one around this way, and then I go back and try to get in between those two. So right now, there are five on here. Uh, I've used the sixth one, and I've used partial of the fifth one. 
uh, to finish this, but I only needed 100 stitches. And so once I had my bobbin filled again with my blend, this went really quickly. And I was able to get three of these done. They're 36 stitches each, and so that gave me 108 stitches. So I just spaced them apart, 15 spaces, stitches apart per the pattern and got that done. So it's just a little bit, but that's all it's supposed to be. And I'm not gonna stitch any more on it today because I'm still in catch up mode. And what I would like to do now is one of two projects. I will either do my Halloween Quaker uh, for the outdoor activity, or I'll do the um, 12 days of Christmas, the Stitchers 12 days of Christmas. Um, for the indoor activity. And once I get those two done, I'll, I'll be caught up on my Bringo for today until today's call. So I'd like to get, if I can, at least one more of those done before we go to dinner. We have plans this evening with friends of ours. We're meeting up for fish and um, then we're going back to their house for dessert. So if I'm lucky enough, I may get one more goal met. Uh, but the reason that I haven't stitched as much today as um, I thought I might is that I decided I needed to catch up also and pull together what I'm going to do for my um, anniversary uh, since it was my seventh anniversary on Floss Tube while we were on the boat. So I have stopped. I've pulled that together. I've videotaped it, and I'm going to put it in after this segment. And uh, so... I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you find something in there that you might like. And now I'm going to get back to stitching, so I'll talk to you soon. Happy stitching. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. It is the um, 21st of January, and I am finally caught up enough to be able to pull together a celebration of sorts. January is my anniversary month for Floss Tube. I am celebrating, or just celebrated, seven years on Floss Tube. I started it on January 13th, 2016. So while we were on our vacation, I celebrated my seven year anniversary on Floss Tube. <laughs> and I couldn't do anything about it at that point. So I have gone through my collection. I've gone through things that I have gleaned from uh, gifts that people sent me and said, you know, use it or, or save it to give away. I have purchased doubles of things without meaning to. Um, anyway, I have some really nice packages for you to choose from. And here are the rules. They're pretty much standard. Please don't say giveaway or win in your comment. Um, that'll make me have to delete it. And I don't want to do that. I will show you the keyword for each one. So you will need to use that keyword in your comment. You are welcome to try for any and all of these. Uh, but you'll only get the first one that your name is picked for. Your comment is picked for. Please be 18 or older so I can get your mailing address. I will ship this anywhere because it's pretty small. Um, I kept it small on purpose, and I hope you'll understand that. That way I can keep it open to anybody that wants to participate. So I tried to get a bit of variety knowing that people have different stitching styles. So I'm hopeful that you'll find at least one of these that you might want to try for and put your comment in. But it's just my way of saying thank you for uh, watching my videos, especially for subscribing. I would ask that you be a subscriber um, if you're gonna participate. And um, I particularly appreciate all your comments. Um, I have the best commenters. I feel like I have conversations in the comments. I don't generally um, pull comments forward for questions because I, so far, am answering every question that comes through. Uh, if I've missed yours, it's because I didn't see it. It's because I it didn't come through for me or I somehow, oops, or somehow I've missed it. So um, if you haven't heard from me uh, and you commented, please feel free to do that again and let me know I missed it. Um, 
because I do try to answer everyone. Uh, I may not be able to do that forever, but you know what? Up until now, I have been. I just make it a priority, and I do it first thing every morning, and I do it usually last thing every night. <laughs> so um, it's just it's something I enjoy. Uh, no pressure on me. It's just something I enjoy doing. So again, thank you for... Uh, for subscribing and watching my channel and taking my stitching journeys with me. I appreciate it so much. So get a pen and a piece of paper and write down any of these that you want to uh, put a word for in your comment so that I can um, have your name there. Let's start with the very first gift. Now I do, uh, it's my seventh anniversary, so I have seven small packages here, just little gifts that I would love to share with you. So the first one, is a fully kitted project. It's called um, Love is the Greatest Adventure. It's a heart and a hand. And it comes with everything you need. Fabric, finishing fabric, and the DMC floss. So it's a fully kitted project. If you're interested in this one, use the word adventure. A-D-V-E-N-T-U-R-E, -E, Adventure. That's for this one. The second grouping that I have is, are two patterns, and they are a Blue Ribbon Designs Proud and True Sampler. And I'll read it to you. It says... Um, with my needle and threads of red, white, and blue, I stitched this sampler so proud and true. And it says, um, in the year, and it has 2008, that was when it was, I guess, designed. I've had this in my stash for a while, um, and it, it was gifted to me, and I thought I might stitch it, but I have. I have not, and so I've decided I'm gonna pass it along and let someone stitch it that loves samplers and, and would like a patriotic sampler. And then this one is just too fun. It's a Mill Hill. It was also gifted to me. It has been bent by, in the mail, the mailman bent it in my post office, so I apologize for that. But I've never stitched this one either. So um, it's a Mill Hill. It does not have anything with it. Um, it didn't come with anything with it to me. So um, you would have to probably um, kit it up, but I just wanted to throw it in here as a second patriotic um, piece for you if you're interested. So if you like either one of these, they come together. Yes, use the word patriotic in your comment. So the second group is patriotic. The third little grouping I thought might be fun for people who like to do smalls. And I decided it would be also more interesting if they were for different seasons in the year. So you'd have a small that you could do all throughout the year, a different one. So I started with uh, Valentine's because we're about to hit Valentine's. And this is a Country Cottage Needleworks called Lovebirds. That's your the Valentine one. And then for uh, Easter coming up in the spring, I have a Scattered Seed Samplers Spring Delivery. This is one of those that I have two of. <laughs> I don't know why I got two of them. I think one was gifted to me and one I, um, I got on my own. And then Hands-On Design. Boo, chock full for Halloween. And this one could be fall if you left the boo off, but the faces on there to me look like they're Halloween. They look frightened, you know, like they've been startled or something. And the last one is Christmas. It's a Lizzie Kate and it's the gift of love. And they actually show two different um, patterns there don't know if they're both in there. I haven't looked. Yes, they are. They're both in there. 
So this is two in, in one package. So if you're interested in this one that includes the Lovebirds, Spring Delivery, um, Boo Chock Full, and the Christmas Lizzie Cake called Gift of Love, then just put in your comment the word Seasons. Be sure you put the S on the end. Seasons. S-E-A-S-O-N-S. Okay, I know that there are some sampler stitches out, stitchers out there. And um, this is a Victorian sampler called Baby's Honey Farm Sampler. I have checked. This embellishment pack isn't available anymore. Um, but it looks as if what you need are um, little bees, little gold beads of... Um, there are three little bees flying across here. But I think you could probably find some little gold bees if you wanted to, or you could put whatever you want across there, if, if anything at all. I think it, you could finish it without any trouble uh, to be a very pretty one. There are um, three other samplers. They're shown on the back. I don't have those. Uh, but if you wanted to do the collection, this could be your first that you have. And uh, it's called Babe's Honey Farm Sampler, as I said. And then there's Amity Manor by Twin Peaks Primitives. I think that's a great sampler. And it's, um, you could, it says, that to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. You could either use that quote or put your own in there because it's nice and open. You could chart your own if you didn't like that one. But it's, um, pretty sampler so if you're interested in this grouping of two patterns just use the word samplers okay and I know several people have these on the go I have one on the go that I haven't worked on in a long time but they seem to be kind of gaining a little more in popularity from what I'm viewing uh, on floss tube. So I had this one gifted to me. I'm probably never gonna stitch it. If I ever finish the one I have, I may never get to do another one, I don't know. But this is a Chatelaine, and this one is called Evening in the Park. Beautiful colors, absolutely gorgeous. If you're interested in this one, just use Chatelaine, C-H-A-T-E-L-A-I-N-E -E in your comment. And I'll put your name in that drawing with the random comment picker. And then I know some of you are also very into full coverage. So I have two full coverages. These were gifted to me by my son, so these are very special to me. But I've been honest with myself and I won't stitch them. There's no need for this wonderful gift to languish in my stash. So there are two of them. This one is um, Lady in Pink Gown, and the, um, it's it was inspired by an Art Nouveau artist, Alphonse Mucha. Isn't she beautiful? And the second one I have is Madonna della Strada, Madonna of the Streets, by an Italian artist, Roberto Faruzzi. And I'm going to do these together, um, because if you're a full coverage person, you might want them both. And all you have to write in your comment is full coverage. And I'll put you in there for that. And then the last one I have for you is a different style that I really like, but I'm not going to do either of these. I really wanted to do this one for a long time, but I'm honest with myself. I have enough Quakers. I won't be doing it myself. So this one is called Quaker Sampling 3. It's an original design by Ellen Chester, um, and it's a With My Needle 
pattern. Isn't that beautiful? Now, in addition to the pattern, whether you want to use them for this pattern or not, I don't know. But this shows a really dark, dark, almost burgundy red, almost brownish red. And I have some Karen water lilies called Espresso. And I want to show them to you. Aren't these beautiful? They're very variegated. Now I will tell you, this one looks a little different. Got it wrong there. This one looks a little different. It has more of the blue in it. But if you mix them up and, you know, just take from uh, this one intermittently between the other two, probably, I, I think it would just add colors to it. But with three of these, um, these are 12 stranded, 12 ply, uh, and they're six yards a piece. So I think you'll have plenty of thread if you wanted to do this Quaker piece in this variegated uh, silk. So I put it with it because this is what I was going to stitch it with um, if I did it. And so I'm going to share it with you. And then I have one more Quaker pattern here. And this is called, the, it's by the, the Stitcherhood and it's called Quaker Pumpkin. And that's a little more simpler, um, but I also had picked a water lilies, the Karen water lilies silk for that pumpkin, and it's called Burnt Toast. And I thought that would have made an interesting pumpkin. So that will come with this chart as well, since that's what I had picked uh, to do it in if I did it. And so you'll get two Quaker patterns and you'll get, get silk floss, um, silk threads, if you like, the Karen Water Lilies. Um, I had already bagged them up, so they're in a bag, so they'll be protected, um, if you're interested in this grouping. And in order to try for that, you just put the word Quaker in your comment. So I hope I got something in here that you liked. Um, maybe more than one, I don't know, but, uh, Feel free to add into your comment. I will uh, ask that you put your comment on this video and I will give the, um, to the end of the month, I probably will um, wait until the first uh, of February, first couple of days of February, uh, when I get ready to do my next video, I will go in and I'll do the random comment generator for all of these. Um, so good luck and uh, thank you again uh, for being so uh, kind as to watch my videos and to stay with me uh, over the last, um, some of you over the whole seven years. So I really appreciate it and um, thank you for your dedication to our craft. Happy stitching everybody. Good evening once again. <laughs> Welcome back. Okay, we are back home from our dinner, and I have been able to finish my other prompt I was trying to get completed tonight. And so now I have a total of 11 hours toward my 24 hours of cross stitch, and I still have tomorrow. I may, I may be able to grab out two or three more, I don't know, maybe, I'm hoping. But today I went ahead and jumped ahead for what was called on the 21st, which was for today, and that was to stitch on something that represented an indoor activity. Well, I consider cross-stitching an indoor activity because most of the time I do it indoors. I've stitched outdoors a few times, but I find it I'm more comfortable indoors so I can spread everything out and don't have to worry about uh, leaves falling on my, my material or anything like that. Um, so, this is the one that I had chosen for the indoor activity, which is the Stitcher's, Stitcher's Days of Christmas and uh, by Sue Hillis. And when I left off with this the last time, 
I had completed the scissors, the 12 pair of gingers. And so this time I picked up and started on the uh, wording for the golden needles, the 11 golden needles. And they are over here. The wording is right here and the needle is right there. I think you can see that it's got red floss uh, supposedly hanging through it. So that is the part that I got done today. 11 uh, golden needles. And here is my golden needle and the floss that's supposedly stitched through it and hanging out there. And believe it or not, and I counted all of this, all of it, two stitches for one because it's back stitching. And I still got 127 stitches. So I'm very excited about that. It met the prompt for Bringo. And so now, since it's still only the 21st, I'm only one behind. And that is my Winter Quaker. Um, and I've put it off because it's been in timeout since I had to frog it. And when I pick it up this time, I need to get started on putting that motif back in that I frogged out. And I think that's why I've been avoiding it. But I think I'll wait and do that tomorrow. Uh, the number for tomorrow has been called. It's number four in its smallest whip. And I had originally said I was going to work on my uh, vintage Christmas ornament for that. Um, and then while I was traveling, I had substituted its um, spring fever for that one. So I think what I'll do is um, pull out the vintage ornament um, because it gives me an excuse to work on it. And I got to do a lot of work on Spring Fever while I was traveling. And since it was my original pull, my original choice for that, I think I'm gonna keep it and do that. So tomorrow my goal is to stitch on the vintage ornament for 100 stitches and to stitch on the Halloween Quaker for 100 stitches. Um, and depending on how I'm feeling tomorrow and how much time I have, Maybe I could get that whole motif back in there. I sure would feel good if I could. So that may be a little secondary goal. We'll see. <laughs> anyway, thanks for letting me come back again today and share with you my final um, stitching progress of the day. Um, so I got two prompts of Bringo caught up today, um, which it makes me very happy uh, considering everything else that I did today and considering the fact that I videotaped my um, anniversary celebration. So I, uh, I'll i show you this now that I have it out the Q-Snap. I was taking it out so I could show you the whole thing. But this is, this is how pretty that looks. That red absolutely pops on this fabric. It really does. So I'll have to pull my card out to see what which fabric it is, but um, it's, it's a beautiful color, um, just light enough that the golds and the greens and the reds pop on it. So really am pleased with this fabric. I think it is a silver, it might be, but I'll let you know, stay tuned. <laughs> anyway, happy stitching everybody and good night. Welcome back, everybody. It is Sunday night. It is January the 22nd, and I'm here to give you a stitching update for today. Well, it's Sunday. It's been a crazy busy day, but I am very pleased to report I got some stitching time today. I decided to go ahead and tackle one of my um, Bringo calls that I hadn't been able to hit. And this was to stitch on the one number 23 for an outdoor activity. It was actually called on the 20th and I didn't get to do it in time. Uh, and then I skipped ahead and did my indoor activity because this whip was still in timeout. And I'm talking about Halloween Quaker. And the reason it was in timeout was my own fault. I had stitched it incorrectly while I was on my vacation 
and um, I frogged it. And then I decided I would stitch back the 100 stitches I needed for the prompt and move on. And then I got to thinking about that and decided no, because then that never resolved why it was in timeout and didn't get it finished and ready to really move forward. And I really wanted it there. So instead of just doing 100 stitches and moving on today and maybe getting another prompt done and moving on, I decided to bite the bullet and get this one finished. So here it is. This is the motif that I had stitched, frogged, and had to restitch because when I had stitched it on the cruise, I had counted off the wrong one of these. And I had wound up putting this corner across from this one instead of this one. So this was about four to five stitches high it was up here and I had toyed with the idea of just putting some additional information over here like the year I stitched it and finishing this motif by just mirroring what was there and it, I counted it out and it would have been nice and I could have worked it across the top but that would have left a bigger gap here than was necessary and then that meant I would have been adjusting all the way down and the more I thought about it, the more I didn't want to do that. So instead, this is where I'm at in that top corner. I frogged it on the boat, and then I came back in here. Last night, I stitched this outer border all the way around, and I would have it would have had enough stitches in it. Last night, I actually stopped with 158 stitches, and I could have been done with it for the prompt and moved on. But as I told you, I just didn't. So today, before I put it away, I just couldn't make myself put it away. I went ahead and I finished the motif and I got it all done. We're done with that. So now it's ready to move. It's ready to put away. So I'm excited about that. So today when I uh, finished that motif that I had stitched and frogged and stitched again, I had originally said that I had to frog 14, no, 416 stitches. Well, today when I restitched it and I counted it as I was going this time, it was 461, not 416. <laughs> it's awful. Anyway, I had transposed those numbers, I guess. But maybe it's better I didn't know that, you know, when I was frogging. What do you think? Anyway, I got tickled today. There was a uh, comment on my one of my cruise videos uh, that said the frog had... Um, must have jumped in my bag and come with me out of my um, little terrarium that I have the frog in that's, that was made for me. And I said, no, no, I know where that frog came from. Those ladies in my stitching group, they were having to frog. They were having to frog a different one, uh, probably two or three different times, different people said they had to frog an entire, uh, you know, several rows of their of their knitting or their crocheting. And, um, it was, it was in between those that my frog hit. Uh, I think it jumped right into my bag. <laughs> I think it came right out of their bag into mine. And I hope it left before I left the ship. Um, but I will tell you, it didn't because when I got ready to restitch this, I restitched this and all the way here and my, I ran out of thread right before the last one of these pretty little floral or stars, whichever you want to say. I think it's flowers. When I started this back with my fresh uh, floss, I counted one wrong stitch to get started, and I didn't catch it till I was way over here. Both rows, everything. About 35 stitches or so. I had to frog again. I thought, I am going to lose it over this motif. It is not going to beat me. And it didn't. Once I got that out, I really paid attention. And when I finished this border, on um, this outer uh, border here, I said, I'm going to bed. Just going to bed. Not, not going to work on it anymore. I'm going to wait till I'm, I'm either going to put it away or I'm going to wait till I'm fresh. And I waited till I was fresh today. And I got it done without any trouble today. So I have banished the frog. He has been expelled. 
I hope he does not come to your house. But he's definitely been kicked out of here. <laughs> Let's hope. <laughs> anyway, I hope you've had a great day. We certainly have, although it's been quite busy. It's been a good, productive day. And I'm tickled to death that I got some stitching done. So I'll let you get back to it. And I will uh, share with you my next uh, accomplishment as far as uh, whatever goal I meet next. Happy stitching, everybody.